like hunting, fishing, and the great outdoors, then come along today with Dave Embry in search of the world's greatest outdoor adventures. You'll go all over the world, from Alaska to South America, Canada to Mexico, in search of the most elusive and dangerous game in the world. This is Dave Embry's Adventures in the Wild. For this great adventure, Dave goes north to Canada to team up with Big Horn Bruce Ambler of Ambler's Big Horn Country Guiding. Bruce guides in a premier area of British Columbia that runs west of the Fraser River, about 120 miles north and east of Vancouver, and is home to some of the world's largest California bighorn sheep and mountain goat. There's also found in this area lots of black and grizzly bear, mule deer, mountain lion, moose, and wolf. This area Dave and Bruce will be hunting in is known as the Coastal Chilcotin Mountains. All sheep here are pure California bighorns because the Fraser River has been a natural border keeping them separated from the Rocky Mountain bighorns, which are found on the east side of the river. Last year alone, Bighorn Bruce's clients took some really huge old rams, like this 36-inch, 7th eighths curl ram taken by Hugh Gadsby, or John Ballantyne's 34-inch full curl ram, or this old full curl ram taken by John Wilson, which also measured 36 inches. But just wait until you see the old trophy ram that Dave takes. It's the granddaddy of them all. Well, let's get started as Dave arrives in camp to meet up with Bruce and his trusty sidekick and excellent connoisseur of hot buttered rum, Willie Rickett. Here we are at the world famous Blue Creek Hilton. Blue Creek Hilton, huh? It's this beautiful is up here, yeah. We got up about how high? 7,000 feet up here. about 7,000 feet. Willie. Good. Dave Emery. Hey, how you doing? How you Hi, doing? Willie. Good, Good to meet you. Camp Keeper. Yeah. Camp Keeper. All right. <laughs> Vacation yeah. up here, keeping the camp out here. You betcha. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, this is her. Well, this, this is cook house, barn. Yeah, keep cabins. the horses down below right now. Or? Right now they're down below. Yeah, we'll bring them up here. Yeah. The weather was looking a little rough for a while. Yeah. And we can hunt out of there when the weather's good. So yeah, we got a little bit of snow still hanging on the mountains over yeah, there. Yeah, it's still there. Fire in the shack there. He's ready to go. Yeah. So we're gonna stay. This is just gonna be a base camp. We'll stay in, uh, stay here, and then we'll go out to spike camps and. Uh, Go we'll backpack out of there, out of horses or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we can we can work out of here for a day or two, and then we can go a spike camp down the mountain. Right. We got two or three different spots, and then out of there we can set up. Bruce, how uh, how high are we up here at base camp? Well, we're sitting around 68 to 7,000 feet, somewhere right now. Oh, we're up there pretty yeah, good. Yeah, we're up there, good. Yeah. Well, we're not too far off the coast, Vancouver. What? How far do you think it is as a crow flies? Higher miles hundred? would probably be about 100 and. 20 miles. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah that's right. We went to, far. We flew into Kamloops and we came back this way, so right. on in, by road, yeah. yeah. Well, the highest peak's about the water the uh, mountains peaking at. High peak around here is about 9,000 feet. The uh -huh. highest one in the range is somewhere around 95, so. About that's what about elevation right. the big ram's thing at, about 9,000? Yeah, 9, yeah <laughs> no. They're anywhere from the tree line to the top. Yeah. yeah they're up yeah. there. Yeah, they stay up. I noticed a lot of the mountains coming out just didn't even have much above tree line. Most trees up to the top, but when we came up the valley right here, you see this whole range here was looking pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it's sticking out quite a bit higher, eh? Yeah. Got a lot of other game here too, then I guess. Other game, yeah. We got uh, we got good mule deer in here. We got a good population of goats, the odd moose, and we're yeah. working on getting the two bears maybe. Yeah, black bears. And we're working on getting the grizzly. Oh yeah. Goat as well, well, that's so. good. So we can come up and take a. There's know. all kinds of game. You know, your hunts run, uh, what, uh, two weeks, 12 days, 14 12, days? 12, 14 days, uh -huh. yeah, and that's a mixed bag hunt for yeah. uh, goat, sheep, mule deer, or black bear. Well, that's fun, because along the way, while we're trying to find a good ram, we might run into something else. And you bet, take yeah, it. there's your, you, you know, that's why I got take this, your pick. That's why I got this pocket full of tags here, right? <laughs> Whatever comes along, we're going to whack, okay? Yeah, if we come by one of these little lakes, there we have quite a few little lakes in here that got good fishing in it. Maybe we'll get some trout fishing in, too. These California bighorns, that's what we're hunting here. And uh, they're really just, you don't, there's not a very big area in the whole world that the California bighorn comes from. Yeah. And, and you're so right, slap dab in the best part of it. This is this is about as good as it gets for California yeah. bighorns, yeah. Well, that's good. I think it really will expand that slam out to five and include the California bighorn as a separate subspecies of the bighorns and, and yeah that'd be good that's what we're doing we're gonna get a big uh, big full curl or nothing right we'll, we'll get the big guy <laughs> of course we know on bighorn it's so hard to bring them back anyway so yeah it is <laughs> and on uh, California bighorns you got more of a tendency to broom back and grow yeah. horns back yeah. heavily, heavily broom three quarters and seven eighths is the majority right of what see yeah 
full curl ram will be a young guy that hasn't hasn't broomed his horn yet. Uh -huh. So if we can get us a big full curl with a broomed off horn, well, we got something. Okay. So we'll see what we can do. We're ready to do it then. You ready to do it? You betcha. You boys want to come in for a hot cup of coffee? Oh, that sounds, sounds good to me. me. You ain't got old wood burning stove in here, you do you? You betcha, Hal. <laughs> It's the only way to do it. Go ahead, age before beauty, I always say. <laughs> Up in this country, horses are a godsend and really help cut down on traveling time. They can get you into the general hunting areas of different species, and then you can go afoot once in the area. The weather can change quickly in these coastal mountains from beautiful sunny days to cold, windy ones in a matter of mere minutes. Last night, several inches of fresh snow fell, hopefully getting the deer moving. Deer. The deer for like to use these valleys like this, don't they? Or yeah, they migrate across cover. down through here and they come on right on down. Yeah. Do they live in, they live back up in here normally or they just use this for a travel corridor? The, the odd one who live in there, it's mostly a travel corridor through down right into the Alicum. And that's bighorn country everywhere you see there. Yeah, that's all bighorn country. Well, it's all bighorn country, all right. But there's also grizzly in them Nar hills. And the camp cook saw a huge one from camp just last night. That we saw last night probably just came up over that hill there, huh? Yeah, he'll come right on down there, and he'll migrate right across up on the other side here, and he'll spend the winter up there somewhere. I wish we'd have seen him. We were too, too late last night to see the grizzly. Right, came right behind camp back over the mountain pass over there. We were, we were out hunting. Well, with any luck, we'll go into this pass today here. It's a migratory route for the mule deer, and we'll see some good rams in there yeah. too, I'm sure. Well, you're not hunting, yeah. you're not hunting grizzly here yet, but uh, pretty close to it probably. Working on it, yeah. The more we can see this fall and let them know what kind of numbers that we think are in here for grizz. Well, Open up a little season. Maybe we'll get a season in the spring, yeah. Well, we're, it's the good thing about sheep hunting is you don't have to get up at dark. You know, you can sort of wait till it gets light because the sheep are going to be out feeding. Uh, anyway, and uh, that's right. Be, and when they bed down, they'll be out in the uh, open. Out in the open. Yeah, you can see them. Just have, have have good eyes to see. They're brownish colored, and they'll blend in with the grass and stuff. If there's no snow yet, we've had snow off and on. But what what you were telling me is the best thing is a little white rump is what really shows up good on the bighorn. Look at that little white dot up on the mountain. Yeah, you'll find that. That'll be the first thing you see. I looked. I know. I've been looking. I've seen a. I'm looking, I'm seeing nothing, and all of a sudden, like when the ram <laughs> turns and turns to walk well, away, then just a big white dot appears. And that's it, eh? I mean, they'll you'll glass a hillside for hours, and you won't see them, but they'll just be feeding along towards you, say, and, and they'll just turn. as soon as they make that turn to go Boom. the other way, you've got that big white button. A bunch connect. of white white dots to see. So but we had a chance seeing mule deer on this ride today. Mule deer, big yeah, horn. Yeah, mule deer will be coming through there. Big horns are in there all the time, and with any luck, maybe we'll see another big old grizz Grizzly, coming through there. Black bear, wolf. I got a pocket sure. full of tags. Sure, let's go get them. <laughs> okay, we're about ready. What beautiful country to be in. A sheep hunter always feels lucky just to be in the mountains and knows that he may never even see the ram he's after but he almost always sees life a little clearer as a result of his adventures. Hey, you walk along up here, and you know, you go out here and you go for a sheep hunt or whatever, and, you know, that's really not what it's all about, you know. You walk along and as you step in a piece of gravel, a piece of grass, you think, you know, what, did anybody ever step here before? You know, or am I the first one? Look out across the mountain, the valley, it's so gorgeous. This will give you a good excuse to come out here and do this stuff. You know, that's what's all about. Well, the very next morning, they get lucky and get in close on a mule deer buck. Okay. We got a nice, nice looking mule deer. He's just up here, not 75, 80 yards. We better try to get around this side of him. Saw him go behind this big tree. We're coming up out of camp.
we got it. Oh, 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 here he goes. All right. Oh, oh buddy. Oh, man, that's a nice buck, Bruce. Straight on, buddy. Nice buck. <laughs> I don't know if the horses are going to stay with him. Uh, how's that for starting off? Oh, oh, we got about 200 yards up the hill. <laughs> Be he's a good dark head. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Yeah, he's got good dark antlers. Boys, he go like a shot when you're <laughs> When old seven Max stings your little lungs there, you'd run too, wouldn't you? That's right on. Well, hey, that's a good start. We'll get him. It was that extra oh. cup of Maxwell House. Oh, Dusty. Oh, Dusty. Oh, boy. Oh, Dusty. Oh, Dusty. Oh, Dusty. <laughs> Brownie. We're wondering how the horses would do if we shot around. <laughs> well, they're not, they're not See here, too not bad. too bad. I wouldn't want to be sitting on him. <laughs> <sighs> That's a fast action there. He's, hopefully, he's just laying a few yards up in the trees there. He's about 250 pound deer, man. He's huge. Well, we better go back and finish that pot of coffee. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Boy, what a buck and only 200 yards out of camp on the first morning of the deer hunt. There'll be plenty of camp meat for sure now. He's pretty much had it. Line right there. Pile up. Pile up. Pull the forks on that side. Something on that side. Oh, on this side. Right. 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 oh, man, what a heavy deer. Big heavy deer. Oh, yeah. Whew. Wait, another. Looks like he's sort of stunted going? or something, doesn't he? A little bit stunted. That side there, how he's got sort of bulbed up. Running. Not a boy. <laughs> there you go. He's about 20, 21 inches spread. He's sort of a funny animal. You know, I think he's going downhill. He looks like he is a little bit. I think eh? he's I think he's old. But big old white nose arm. Yeah, nose arm. white face. Look how big his body is. Man, what a what a deer. Well, good work. That's a good start. <laughs> These mule deer are really something, I tell you. He was feeding around in here and See there on his antlers there where he's been rutting that been tree. Rubbing, rubbing that tree. Yeah. yeah. Barking. Yeah, it's all green. Well, that's good. Heads all done like that. Big old ears. Of course, mule deer's ears, you know, like this, if you're looking at him, you sort of tell a spread. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of time to look at him. He's a yeah, big he body. the hill there. He got a quick look at him. Big bodied old deer. You can even smell him a little bit. Eh? He's starting to stick yeah. up a little bit. He's starting to rut. Where are we supposed to put it? That's good. That looks good. <laughs> right on, Dave. Good we got to pack him on the horses and get him yeah, out of here. Yeah, we'll toss him on the horse and get him out. We got to throw some of that rump roast on the, on the fire tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Good job. Well, after dressing out the buck, it's back to Spike Camp for a little snack before packing up and heading over to goat country. The spike camp has always been one of Dave's favorite times in the mountains with its rustic canvas tents, hitching posts where all the trusty steeds are secured, old trophies of hunts long gone by, and of course, the campfire where old stories always abound. And every once in a while, you might even learn something new. Out here, seven, eight miles from camp, we don't have a spoon. So this is our educational hour here. <laughs> this, folks, is what you do when you're in the woods and you don't have a spoon. You always got to have a can of beans. Or you got to have, like, here's our, I see it's written in French on this one side, being in British Columbia on this side, it tells you what it really is. Butterscotch pudding. And here's how we're going to make a spoon. So if 
you're ever, you know, stranded, and we don't want you to not survive. So <laughs> we got to show you how to make a spoon. Here's this basic survival training. You take the little top. This, this, by the way, I, I must give credit to the creator of this ingenious creation. That was Mr. Bruce here. He showed me how to do this. Bighorn Bruce. Steve. Big Bighorn Bruce. Excuse me. <laughs> Bighorn. You take the little top. You just sort of bend on the inside. You bend them over on the corner. <coughs> like that, turn it around, bend this side over like this, don't cut your finger, or don't lick, lick the edge, right, big horn, <laughs> cuts his tongue yesterday doing this, take this top, and sort of bend it up like a spoon there, and take your top, bend it like that, see, nice, no sharp edges, Just this is your pudding, right, I'll show them how to demonstrate with yours. <laughs> Just take your pudding. There you go. Fine stuff. So that's your in the field tip lesson 101 for Big Dave and Big Horn Bruce. <laughs> well, that's the mountain man way of eating beans or uh, pudding, I guess. But old Big Horn Bruce is so tough, I bet he never uses a spoon, even at home. Dave thinks he's sneaky. Oh, well, so much for my philosophy. I may even quit calling him Big Horn Bruce from now on. Pack horses are a real convenience when hunting many miles from base camp, and there's a real art to getting everything loaded up just right. After getting the horses all saddled up, all the ropes have to be tied and adjusted in just the right way so as to hold the gear high on the horse and balanced equally between the two sides. The gear, or in this case, camp meat, is loaded into the panniers and then put on the horse and tied into place. The good wrangler has to know several types of knots, with the good old half hitch being used to secure the panniers so they don't work loose as the horse bounces and bangs his way down the old mountain trails. After all the pack horses are loaded, they're tied head to tail, and everyone then heads out for a beautiful seven-mile ride back to base camp with lots of time to ponder about how great it is to be alive at times like this. Well, a few days later, a few miles longer, and a few thousand feet higher, and Dave's getting his first long-range look at a British Columbia mountain goat. It's amazing to watch these nimble-footed creatures jump around and through the rocks, thousands of feet above the valley floor. One false move or a loose rock could surely mean the end to one of these magnificent creatures' lives. But the key to their defense is being inaccessible to most predators, and the cliffs are their ally. That's the, that's the nanny. And the kid on the right there, Bruce, right? Yeah. He's laying back. There. Billy, pretty nice. Billy's laying back there behind that. Long, just out of sight right now. We're just sort of waiting on him to stand up. Good long shot across here. <laughs> That's what we're all debating. Is it 350, is it 400, 450? Looking through the scope, I think it's about 375, something like that. Just judging the body size, you know, in the scope. That'd be a pretty close cool shot, I think. Yeah. Well, shooting at 7 mag, it's shooting at 300 yards, it's shooting, shooting these 160 knots for partition Federals. It's shooting 6.7 inches low at 300, and it's shooting 19.6 low at 400. So I think we can call it at, uh, you can see him a little bit right there. Walk, stand. We're just waiting for him to sort of get up, move around a little bit. With him feeding, he ought to get up a little bit. So I'm just going to hold, hold uh, say, six inches over his back. I think we'll be about right if he stands up. They sure are beautiful, aren't they? What's that other goat going up there? Is that a little Billy or another nanny? Pretty big goat. Might be a young Billy. Pretty good size. Not big on the horns, though. Pretty white right now, aren't they? That's the younger, younger Billy there. Younger Billy. That's the one that's right on the ridge, the third one down from the right. Third one down there. 
one we're after is still sitting down there. Move around a little bit. Well, all we can do is wait. I'm here just moving around feeding. No telling what we'll do. So. There's nothing like getting up here high and looking around anyway. Yeah. This is gorgeous. <laughs> if you look back down, if you look back down here where we came from, came back in the bottom of that valley. Way down where all the valleys sort of meet down there at the bottom. We came back up that other draw and to the left there and came up to the valley and came across this side over here. We saw this goat about halfway here. As we were walking back up across this side, we saw the goat, so we came back around and through here. Let's see him sitting up here on the top. It's as close as we can get. It's just a waiting game now. Well, it's not a nice trip through the grass there. Oh, it's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Sorry we couldn't record all that. <laughs> to show everybody what the goat hunting is like. <laughs> like I'd rather have climbed that face over there. This is as close as we can get. The big goat is lying just out of sight, so all we can do now is wait and hope that he stands up soon. The other goats are just milling about the cliffs, feeding and playing. In between the goats' hooves are soft, rubbery pads, which help them grip better to the rocks, sort of like Vibram soles we use on our sheep hunting boots. Dave, Bruce, and Raymond Caldwell, who's helping Bruce's wrangler on this hunt, are all undecided on the exact range from their position to where the goats are. Range estimation in the mountains can sometimes be extremely difficult, especially when looking across open canyons such as this one. Dave's best guess is 375 yards, and he computes his estimated bullet drop from that distance and figures he should hold just on the top of the goat's shoulder. Goats usually won't run wild after shots are fired like most game does, and there's usually plenty of time for follow-up shots if needed. As always, you should never take a shot at any animal unless you can be reasonably assured of a quick, clean kill. Dave believes he can zero in on this big goat okay, if he will ever stand up. A little bit. Which one is he now? Little bit. He's one on the left. Far left. He, he fell. He fell. Still moving around there. I think that first shot hit him pretty good. I think it did. Yeah. Did you see? Okay. Yeah. He hung straight up in the first one, but I was looking for blood. Is that him there? That's him moving down the hill. No, that's not him. No, he's over the left still. He's on the left, moving down yeah. the hill. Oh, he's right behind the log. Yeah. Is he dead? He's not moving now. <clears throat> yeah. It should have been. It was, it was right on. I thought it was good when he and Hurley moved, so I could stand him. Let's see that again, this time in slow motion. What's unusual about this footage is that you can actually see the heat distortion from the flying bullet as it crosses the cool valley. The first shot is perfect. The goat's not quite completely broadside, but is quartering slightly towards Dave. As you see the bullet fly, you can see it strike the goat in the front shoulder, and it exits out the opposite lung. The second shot looks like a high miss at first, as it appears to strike the trees behind him. However, when you watch it in slow motion, what looks like white bark flying from the tree is actually the bullet exiting from the goat and white hair flying. You can see here how tough these cliff dwellers actually are.
see the heat wave of the flying bullet in the third shot? The third shot is another perfect hit, breaking the opposite shoulder of the already mortally wounded goat. You got him good, boy. Oh, he's went back over. He's right behind that log back in there right now. Isn't he? Yeah, good shot. All right. <laughs> you got a good one. Makes all that walking worthwhile, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Now, oh. Bruce, you got to pack him out, Bighorn Bruce. Bruce Bighorn. No goats for me. We'll call, we'll we'll call you the goat man. <laughs> goat man of BC. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. That's a nice one. Yeah, he, he's just back there behind that deal. I think he probably got caught up on that tree right there, don't you? With any luck, he's caught right in there. Yeah. That's good one. Let me shake that. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Oh, boy. Good one. Well, we got to uh, do a little packing job, don't we? We got to go all the way down that valley. We got Come back around that side, you think? Yeah, we'll go around the bottom there. Hopefully, he's hung up on the top. How long did it take us this one? 40 right now. We started at 9.30 this morning. A little over four hours stop. Yeah. It's going to be another few, couple hours getting ready to now go. Now so. the real work starts. Oh, Bruce is going. packing it out. So Bruce packing out. out no time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Well, let's we'll start packing this stuff up. Yeah, let's get on here. Got a boy. <laughs> Well, the work's not over yet. A couple of hours later, they find their trophy. Well, we got her, Bruce. There he is. Boy. He's a good one. That's a big goat. Look at the size of him. Beauty. That big. That's about, I can go a little over 10. My fingers will go nine, so that's nine right there. And about good another shot. inch Guy. or so. Good work. <laughs> That's like long-range bombing there, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Good work yeah. there, Raymond. Hey, hey, thank you, Ray. Appreciate it. Got him right through the chest right there. That's a good shot. Good shot. That's, that's, that's gorgeous. Nice. Starting to get a good winter hair on him. Yeah. Came down a little bit off there yeah. before we got him. He toppled off there pretty Yeah, good. he fell down through here. He's got two horns on him. Yeah. <laughs> he's nice. got all his horns, and he's got a nice coat. We'll make a nice mount. We got a little ways to go. Great. Don't fall. You just packed this thing. <laughs> That's All a good right. one. Well done. Bruce. Good. We'll make a full mount out of him, Bruce. Appreciate that it, man. Good job. Good good it's job. on to the. You know what's your nickname? Bruce the Bighorn Ambler. <laughs> so it's on to the Bighorn part now. Uh, Let's see if you can do as good at that as you do at goat hunting. We'll keep it up and we'll see what we can do. All right. Great. Shouldn't have a problem. You got your knife? Let's do her. All right. Oh. Well, that's a dandy mule deer and a fantastic 10-inch mountain goat in only a couple of days. But as Dave says, now's the time for Big Horn Bruce to live up to his name. Hiking down through the beautiful mountains with a pack on your back is always a great feeling. And in this case, there's even a greater satisfaction with the magnificent goat in the pack. The majestic beauty of mountains where sheep and goats live is always stunning, especially with the fall colors of the turning leaves. It's the little things in life that sometimes seem the best, like a hard climb into the mountains followed by a drink from a nearby cool spring. In the early fall, bighorns like the high country and are almost always found well above tree line. It takes good horses and strong legs to get around in these types of mountains with lots of stops to look for rams. Of course, every once in a while, there's time for a talk and a nap. <laughs> when are we going to find a bighorn, bighorn? Over, over them there hills. <laughs> There's rams and them their hills over there, huh? I tell you what, this is some kind of beautiful country. We're just sort of sitting out here. Nice morning, it's about nine o'clock in the morning. Scoping out for guy, this, these mountains here, these hills here hold about everything. We've got mule deer in them, we've got Black bear, saw a nice grizzly by camp the other day, big grizzly. This country's known for big grizzly bears. Like I say, you got wolf, mule deer, grizzly bear, black bear, and uh, most of the hillside now, most of the berry 
bushes. There's a lot of them all over the hillsides here above Timberline, and most of the berries have been eaten. I imagine the bears have, have gotten them, or Bruce put them in his pies at camp, gave them to Terry or something. <laughs> I don't know who likes berries better, me or the bears. But, uh, we saw a little black bear the other day, just sort of walked out in front of us there. You saw him, I didn't get a chance to see him, but yeah, you're up in front, back on that ridge over there. And yeah, maybe we'll see him again. He should pop out there, hanging around there and all. That's really what's sort of nice about hunting in here is that uh, you know, you've got an opportunity to, to take a lot more animals, you know I mean? Primarily what we're going to come in here for, we're here, you know, I want to get a big horn sheep, you know, more than anything else, big ram. Yeah. But, uh, you know, along the way, you know, we've got an opportunity to whatever else we happen to see, you know, yeah. we can yeah. take too. So it's a, we can, uh, we've got some fairly decent weather right now. Of course, I guess it's subject to change at any time in the mountains. It, yeah, it can change pretty fast, but the majority of the, you know, this time of year, the, the weather's pretty good. You know, you don't get, a, you might get a little bit of snow comes and it'll go again. Yeah. This time of year it's pretty dry. Yeah. Through most of the sheep season it'll it'll be nice warm weather. Yeah. A lot of the time t-shirt weather. <laughs> it'll be pretty nice. That almost gets to be too hot when it gets like that. You've got to start climbing mountains, doesn't it? Just about, yeah. Of course it's nice you can use the horses to do a lot of uh, pack packing for you and so forth. You know, you can move camps and okay, we're over and we're staying in the camp. It's probably how many miles from base camp now? Oh, uh, we'd probably be Six or eight. See. Yeah, six or eight miles, miles. From base camp. It's a nice area back in here. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. You can pack, you can use the horses. We can pack, pack out of the base camp up to some areas if you want to look at some different areas. That way you don't, we don't have to spend so much time riding back and forth every day out of there. Yeah, from our base camp, we got spike camps along the oh, All up to those mountains there. Yeah, we uh -huh. go into each different uh, valley there and have a look around. That's what's nice at base camp, you know, you can drive into it. That road's down there, down that it's far valley, yeah. The far valley, it's, it's nice and central. You can come in there and out of there we can take the horses or, uh -huh. or backpack, whatever. Well, that makes a nice base yeah. camp. You can four wheel drive right up in the camp. You've got a lot of modern conveniences there, cabins and yeah. wood burning stoves and beds to sleep in. You know, I actually got a sheet on my bed there. Of course, I hadn't been there many days, but well, it makes <laughs> at least it's the place it makes to come it back. It's comfortable to come back to, eh? Yeah. He can come back and rest up a day or two and go back out to another spike camp out here yep. and uh, hunt some more. It's the perfect way to hunt. And of course, after out of the spike camps, we can still backpack out of those too. So. You can backpack out of there, yeah. And most of the time, you do have to backpack out yeah. of these rams. You know, it's, it's very seldom you ride up to a <laughs> ram on a horse. Big one anyway. You get to jump off and take the shot. So. Well, a horse can get you to a good timber line area, you know, that way you can have a nice camp where you got wood and you got yeah, wind break and so forth. And yeah. you just head out in the morning with your pack and if you need to stay out overnight, we can be prepared to stay out overnight if we need to somewhere and sleep under the stars or whatever. Be fine with me. You saw a couple of little does over there, didn't you? Or does and fawns just a yeah, minute ago. A little group of deer over in the back there in that old burn. Oh. They like those burns. Yeah, there he goes. Got it under his foot there. Well, so is the life in sheep camp. Pretty rough one. I think I'll take a nap. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if you've seen anything, Bruce. Well, it must be rough. What a gorgeous place for a nap, though. Well, the next day, Dave and Bruce spot a band of younger rams, with the largest one being about three-quarter curl, a legal ram. A light snow has just begun to fall now, and they hope it keeps up until the ground is covered solid. This would make spotting sheep easier, since their brown bodies would stand out against the white snow. What do you think about those? Well, got a group. How many's up there? What do we got? One, two, three, four, five. Got six. Six. I think they got one you in the one you in the bunch there too. It's a little bit small. A little over. early, little early in the hunt. Three quarters, five three eighths curl. curl. Three curl. We're gonna get the big one, right? Three quarter curl is about the biggest one. Yeah. We'll just hang off maybe and go yeah. for the big guy. Trophy. Sure. Trophy, huh? We got full curl or nothing, right? Lots of time. Full curl or nothing. We didn't walk up here for nothing, but forty inch ram or it's nothing. It's fun to look at them anyway. Oh yeah. Nice. Up on the hill. Then. 
Nice, nice little band of rams. Moving across there a little bit, eh? Yeah. The rams are still pretty much staying together right now. And start separating here pretty soon once they start finding those ewes. When they start rutting, usually. Uh, they'll be coming in a rut here in another month or so. Yeah. They'll be, they'll be getting at her. No, but they won't be such buddies then, will they? There'll be a little <laughs> bit of fighting going on there, yeah. Yeah, it's a little early in the hut. We'll go. We'll find yeah. some bigger ones. Yeah, we'll sure. get, get the big boys. Sounds good. Over the next several days, Dave and Bruce travel the mountains looking for the granddaddy rams that Bruce know reside here. There are many large groups of sheep, which include mostly ewes, lambs, and younger rams. What we're looking for is a bachelor band of the older rams, which will typically remain separate from the ewes until the rut begins. But you can be assured that if you're looking for them, they are also looking for you. On the bighorns, these guys got like excellent eyesight, right? Yeah, as good as good as eyesight you can get, I think. Better than these binoculars. I think I... They compare it somewhere between uh, eight and ten power binoculars. A lot. And, yeah, they they can see you coming. Right? Half half the time when you're looking at them, through your binoculars are looking at you, right? They've already got you picked out. That's, <laughs> that's why it's so important just to stay right out of sight. You peek over each little hill and have a look, and you stay uh -huh. behind a bush until you've got the ground covered well. So What's the population levels like around this area here? Uh, I think in the the whole the whole area, covering all the way along the Fraser Breaks there and whatnot, I think they counted some somewhere in the fifteen to two thousand. Oh, is that right? Fifteen hundred, yeah. two thousand sheep. That's uh, that's on that's both a, sides of the river. Yeah. That's a good that's a good uh, number. Of, these good, are the California bighorns. These are the, yeah. They're sort of in between the Rocky Mountain bighorn and. Uh, uh, desert they're bighorn, a, sort of an in between. Yeah, they're a subspecies of the Rocky Mountain. Yeah, and, uh, they, you know, their cranial differences are. You can notice it on the front of their horns. They've uh -huh. got a rounded, uh, rounded horn more than that real Rocky Mountain. Yeah, a little sort of ridge around it. And they got a real tendency to uh, grow back, flare out, and broom off heavy. A lot of the uh -huh. rams, you know, will die of old age at three quarter curls. Yeah, eight. they just keep knocking them back. Yeah. That's always been the controversy. Now, you know, I don't know personally. I've seen film footage. Everybody wants to know why does a sheep broom, and I think that you know, it, from what you know, the old timers and what most people think, and what it seems reasonable too, is as the curl comes around the side, it blocks tends to block their eye vision. So people tend to believe they'll get on rocks and so forth and scrape those ends down. But in what I saw the other day, uh, uh, another videographer with a video camera took some footage of bighorns actually butting heads, you know, when they rub and they butt the heads, and he did it in real high speed, and, and so he was able to slow motion it down real slow, and what they found was that whenever the bighorns, if these were two horns like this, whenever the bighorns went to butt, they didn't butt straight on horn to horn, they butted sideways, in other words, they put, this guy put one horn in between this other one's horn like that. And when you match them all up, of course, my fingers are going the opposite. Actually, the horns are the other way. But when they, when they did that, the ends of their horns tended to hit the end of this, oh, yeah. end tended to hit the sure. front side of the other horn, and that was knocking off the end of the horn. So, you know, at least that's probably one way that it's that's being probably, done. There's probably more than one way that it's happening. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we'll just uh, try to spot them, I guess, from a distance, we'll and try to put a snake the on them. Stay out of sight once we got them spotted. You don't let them see you yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Just have to peek over and surprise, surprise, they're yeah, there. Huh? Right. Yeah. You don't let them see you until you're right on top <laughs> and they're, you're looking down the gun barrel. Yeah, that's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. That's right. That's what we need to see now. A big ram lined up off the end of our rifle barrel. Well, we're still looking for the big one, but here's another big group made up of only ewes and lambs, it seems. Bunch of I don't think so. It looks like about 40 head of ewes and lambs. Pretty nice. Anyway, come on. No rams in there. We're seeing sheep, anyways. That's the main yeah. thing. Well, hope we'll go find some rams somewhere around close by. It is pretty sight, though, isn't it? 30 of them. They finally seen us. Now they're moving a little faster. They were just sort of feeding. Well, they're still feeding, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're feeding along there. There's about 20 in that first pack up there, and four or five up above them to the left. 
few stragglers down through the bottom. They're all down through there, man. They're all over. Well, there's got to be some rams around in here pretty close somewhere. We'll keep looking. We'll yeah. find them. I'd see some of them button horns. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? That'd be good. They'll be out of here pretty quick. <laughs> they usually start that a little earlier than the, uh, you know, a month or so before time before they just start between themselves, oh, yeah. just sort of oh, getting yeah. their hierarchy going, yeah. don't they? Yeah, they get warmed up. It'll be another month or so before they start breeding, but they'll be doing some scrap in here pretty quick. Yeah, that's a pretty sight. Good little ridge. They sort of hang in this area out here a lot of times. So this is a real ewe, ewe lamb area. You'll see them in here most of the time. Yeah. This says the sun peaks over the mountain on horseback. Beautiful day. It's starting to warm up a little bit. Even. Don't get much Looking better good. than this, does it? Looking good. Well, let's go find some ram. Yes, yeah, sir. Do it. Oh, boy. Brownie here. Sure beats walking. Of course, you can't get all the way on with the horse. <laughs> okay, you ready to go? Dave, I'm sure you'd rather ride old Brownie up and down these little hills. But what about those skinny little trails those big horse feet have to follow? It's a long way down one of these hillsides, and especially long if your foot's stuck in the stirrups of a horse flipping down the mountainside. Oh, well, I guess it'll all work out okay, especially when you head down the final few feet of the trail that leads back into camp. Life at camp is always a memorable experience. Food cooked over an open fire is always the best in the world, no matter what it is. From the old cast iron frying pan set over the open flame, with tater sizzling, to the reminiscing of the day's events, all make what sheep hunting is all about. Some days it even makes you want to just grab another cup of coffee and sing about it. <laughs> Morning with the moonlight overhead out here in the country. It's easy to roll out of bed. Big horns on the mountain, a billy goat on a cliff. This kind of hunting makes it dry.
Well, finally, they find what they've been looking for. Bruce has spotted four big rams several miles off in the basin of an old extinct volcano. It's still early in the day, but it's just too far and difficult of a stalk to make before dark. So they decide to bivouac out on the rocks tonight and start the stalk at daybreak, if the rams are still there. Well, I think it's the best idea, really, Bruce. You know, he's, he's two miles off. It's 4 o'clock. You can see what kind of weather we got. <laughs> yeah, this ain't no good area. No. Stay, we'll just put it off, maybe. Stay here and uh, go to camp. We can't set up the camp. What we got, you know, what we got, we got sheep that are two miles that away. We're up high, you know, we're above timberline, and we can't we can't get to them tonight. It's about four o'clock in the afternoon. We're not gonna make it tonight in time. By the time we get get up that far and back, we're not gonna be able to make it. So instead of uh, trying to go all the way back down to timberline to camp tonight, we're gonna be in for a nice little fun night, sleeping in our sleeping bag right out here, right? <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get a tent set up here. It look like no, no, no pole tents here. <laughs> That's what she button's all about, right? There. Yeah. All right. Indeed. Horses are ready to go anyway, aren't they? Rodeo going here. Yeah, we well, set up camp. Maybe let's get some later. sleep. We'll be hitting it first light in the morning, right? Yeah. Down the big valley, right? Sounds good. All yeah. right. We'll do it. Do the help. Get some of this. All right. Daybreak finds the band of big rams still in their little bow, and our hunters are getting their gear and making their final game plan to try and put the sneak on the old boys. This is the moment they've been waiting for. After seeing lots of ewes and lambs and having passed up numerous younger rams, they've finally found the ones they want to go after. These smart old rams will surely make worthy opponents. The area they're in is probably the only flat spot within miles. The old extinct volcano has made a perfect pasture for grass to grow, and the old granddaddy rams have probably been living in the area for some time. After the rams feed out of sight behind a large rock pile, Bruce and Dave head down the shale slide toward the rams. The footing is tough, and the shale just slides under one's feet, making it difficult to keep from falling. A couple of hours later, they close in on their last half mile, and the snow has changed to rain. Those sheep are right back around that corner over there before in that little bowl. I think what we're trying to do, that wind's probably coming down around through there. It's possible. Rain's picking up a little bit, too. We can run around up in here on this side. Yeah. we be able to come in on the crosswind, so they shouldn't get any wind of ours. Yeah, because they were feeding back that way. Yep. Earlier, we started up on top of the hill there. Yeah. Well, we're feeding back and forth, and we can come around on the top of that knob. Pretty good rain starting here. I think so. All right, let's go. After spending a couple more hours sneaking from rock to rock and peeking over, they finally locate the four big old boys. They're still feeding unalarmed and only 200 yards away. One's over a full curl, the other's a full curl, and the two remaining rams are both legal. Both of the bigger rams are definitely record book material and exactly what they've been looking for. Now, if they can just get up those rocks so they can get a shot.
After the shot, the other three rams head for the rocks, right behind the biggest ram that Dave has just shot through the heart. When the big ram goes down in the rocks, they stop to look back and try to figure out what has happened. The extinct volcano basin made the perfect spot for sheep. The sediment which is washed into the original hole where the volcano once spewed hot molten lava has made a sandy soil, which is great for growing good grass. Sheep which find favorite spots like this may stay here for weeks as long as they're not bothered by predators. However, while walking over to the ram, Dave did see some wolf tracks which had been recently made. As far as he made it, right there, huh? Man, what a cheek, huh? Yeah. Oh, he's gorgeous. Look at him. <laughs> well, if we were just going to pick one out, we couldn't have picked a better one, could we? I don't think it's better than that. Oh, look how gorgeous he is. That is so. <laughs> yeah, man, I tell you. It needs, look how big and round he is. Had a few fights this old sucker's had. But how old can you tell they are, Bruce? How do you age him? Uh, you out here. OK. Oh yeah, those little deep, the little yeah. deep crevices, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven. You'll probably go eleven. You yeah, eleven or twelve, almost. That last one. Every year, what happens? I guess every year they they start growing the horn and they stop again with the weather and forage changes. Right, and they get better feed and they start growing the antler again. And then when it goes like in the winter, now they sort of stop growing. Yeah, oh, gorgeous. That's that's uh, well, it's a pretty pretty coloration he's got too, isn't he? Gorgeous coloration. Gorgeous. Really nice skin. Nice boy. eyes. Nice broom. Yeah, white nose. Nice, uh, big nose big Roman the nose there, isn't he? Smashing. You can see the tops. Let's look at the tops of his deals here, how banged up they are from fighting. It's, it's almost fighting time for him in another. This is, uh, today's the 23rd of what month is this? September? September? <laughs> yeah. I've been hunting all fall. I don't even know when it is. What it is? September. A month and a half, two months. He'd, he'd, he'd be out banging them. Yeah. As think, it is, I we. I don't think we even would have got to him before dark last night. It's just a bit too rushed. Well, that camp we set up last night was a lot of fun anyway. It sort of added to the experience. And the wait definitely paid off. Well, I tell you, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous ram. I tell you, you know, for a California bighorn, it don't get a whole lot better. I tell you, just like we were talking the other day, you know, it's it's uh, what I always say about hunting. You know, it's not the killing that matters. You know, this is the excuse that we've got to be out here in this beautiful, beautiful country. This is just just fantastic. And otherwise, we'd be sitting in camp whittling or something. If you weren't hunting, right? Probably wouldn't even be here. So, anybody ought to get out and try this. This is oh, this is gorgeous. And we're lucky we even made her in here with this weather. It's the challenge, the looks. Yeah, the, the weather would have to change on us this morning. Well, I tell you what, we've had a. This is a heck of a mixed bag deal up here. I mean, you got you got you got mountain, you got mule deer all in the area up here, and you got you know, good mule deer, good goat, good sheep. Got grizzly bears. We haven't opened the season really yet up on that yet for you, but a lot of those. It's just nice been a it's been a gorgeous time up here. I sure appreciate it, Bruce. Right have to come here. back and see you in a couple of years. Yeah, this is yeah. fantastic. Oh, let's get him skinned out. I'm life size this dude. He's going in the trophy room for sure. Like Dave said, the mature hunter doesn't hunt to kill, but kills to have hunted. And sheep hunting is far more than the taking of a big set of horns. It's a contradictory sport, consisting of long, contemplative hours of scouting and glassing, interrupted with bursts of excitement when the game is spotted and while the actual stalk is made. When your sheep is down and your pictures are snapped, you would do well to pause a moment before field dressing and caping the animal. Take a moment to savor the thrill, the excitement, the feeling of accomplishment, and yes, even to note the strange overtones of silent sadness that comes to every thinking hunter when his highly prized and fairly taken quarry is finally downed. You have just taken one of the finest game animals in the world, and you are a fortunate man to have done so. Please help to ensure the future of the wild sheep of the world by being a responsible hunter and sportsman, and by becoming a member of the Foundation for North American Wild Sheep, an organization dedicated to promoting and enhancing increased populations of wild sheep, and to fund the programs for professional management of these populations. You can make a difference.